show you a little bit of pre-startup maintenance here. First thing is to always find out where your oil plug is. They put it in the most inconvenient place possible on this tractor. Right behind all of the loader arm and everything else. The oil is full right to the top. So that's good. Now I just have to figure out how to get it back in there. And it is snug and quite a reach for my arm. There. Get in there. There we go. All right. Next thing is to take a look under the hood. Make sure our antifreeze and everything is okay. Did I get it? I did. Get that. Oh, she's dusty under there. What you want to do is make sure that there's still sufficient airflow getting through the uh, radiator. We have this uh, initial screen and then the radiator itself behind that. There's also a screen and radiator here for the hydraulic fluid. It doesn't look too bad. At some point before too long, I'm gonna have to give it a clean up though. And I'm already getting into the grease. And this is our antifreeze reservoir here. That looks fine. Battery terminals. I should really give that a little. Make sure that stays on there. Keep moisture and stuff out. Just taking a look down in here. Just looking for any, you know, if there's signs of leakage or anything like that. Make sure that everything's in good shape. Let's take a look at the hydraulic fluid level. This stick is really difficult to tell on it, but I can promise you there's hydraulic fluid showing on it at the appropriate height. So we're good there for hydraulic fluid. I think we're looking pretty good. I really should fire up the pressure washer and give this poor old thing a spray down, but that's not going to happen today. I guess I should close the lid on this guy too. And push this thing forward so that my front end loader stuff is not catching on it. Okay, next thing to do is grease this guy up. So I got tired of hand pumping grease. Even though I only have one tractor, it's enough for me. It's an electric pump, but definitely saves a lot of effort, that's for sure. A lot of people aren't as particular about this as I am. Um, I prefer to not be pumping dirt into my grease fittings. So I clean this out a little bit. Give the top of the grease zirka wipe so that it's clean on the top. And then give her a squirt. My Zerk is plugged. That ain't no good. Let's try down here and see what happens. I guess I did get grease into that one. So I'll work my way down to this guy here.
still don't have the materials I need to finish the little last piece of work on the trailer. So I'm gonna move some more wood. Got a couple pieces in here that aren't very good, but that's okay. I'll pick them, pick through it all, and uh, haul it down to the sawmill. At least the stuff that the tractor will pick up, anyway. I was in the tractor. I saw the dogs running across the field and then a couple of deer were coming up from down below down there. Ran all the way up across the field here. And I totally missed it on camera. It's garden time. This is Ryan's dragon tail radish. Dragon tail radish. Look how tall that is. Stand beside it. It's got to be a good four feet at least. Yeah. So they produce these flowers, but then it makes these, they're almost like beans. I think that's their seed pods, right? Yeah, it's the seed pod. So it's almost like a long string bean or something like that. Ryan pulled one off and gave it to me to taste, and it tastes just like a radish. A little bit spicy, but good. You can kind of see the whole process here. It starts as a flower, then, you know, you kind of get the uh, seed pod starting here. Then it just kind of turns into like a little stick, and it just gets bigger and bigger. Ah, huh. you got something. Get the camera to focus here. Flower. Flower falls off and it starts growing that little stick and that stick turns into the seed pod. That's cool. Yeah, and every part of this plant is edible. Just Have edible. you tried eating a flower? No. The majority of them really didn't start like a big root like this one did. So no, I'm no. pretty sure it has to do with the soil conditions. Let's see what one of these flowers tastes like. The pod didn't really taste like anything. There really isn't much flavor there. Not much flavor there? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and the bush beans are still doing pretty good, too. Cool. Well, they're producing beans. But, yeah. There's like, still some radishes. There's, like, a single salad between our char. There's one <laughs> char there, one char there. And then one oh, there. and the red char. Yeah. yeah so. Maybe got, like... A single salad. For one person. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely not a family sized salad. Oh, so this is where you put the barrel? Yeah, yeah, this is where I'm putting the barrel. Weirdo. I think she found a sweet potato vine that I have uh, left there from <laughs> digging through the dirt. Lacey, come here. I actually know where a bigger piece is. Come here, pup. Look. Yeah, that's part of the actual tater, isn't it? But yeah, so anyways, getting back to what I was saying, I think I only threw like maybe somewhere between 50 to 100 seeds in here. Oh, and, yeah, you need more than that. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I need to buy another bag. I, the little pouch that I had mm. said like minimum 200, uh -huh. but I guess I must have tried to grow some earlier in the season or something because no. I definitely didn't even have half the package. Okay. This is what I was harvesting today. This is our mint. Oh, that's the mint? Yeah, so pretty much everything wow. right here is... Oh, it's all off of that one plant. Yeah. This one plant here, uh, there's actually some in bloom too. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, and look things. at that. There's carrots hiding in there. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. Drew carrots. Yes. There's a big <laughs> row of carrots here. So and they're actually pretty decent size once you get down into the ground. So these are the uh, Denver's, the Oma and Opa Santos. Ah, nice. Oma, your carrots grew here. Now we just have to dig some up and see what they taste like. Figured I might as well take a couple heads for some seed. Yeah, good idea. These are pretty flowers. They are, and they're good for helping to keep some of the pests away. Yeah. We just need to find something that squash folks hate. <laughs> I know the answer to that. It's called chickens. Yeah. That other rosemary, I don't know where that... Oh, I yeah. cut it back already. Yeah, it's cut back down here. We got some rosemary off of that. Actually, yeah. I like that fresh rosemary. That's good stuff. Golden sage is... The golden sage is still alive, and for some reason, my pineapple sage is the happiest out of all my sages. Hmm. Huh. Colored flowers on it. Well, it does still have very brilliant colored flowers, but... Oh, it's... this is the sage here? Yeah. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah. See, there's the other one. I'd, that's the one oh. that I cut back that's sitting in the bucket back at home. Okay. Yeah. He's coming back. He's yeah. even got some flowers on him, too. They even oh. sprouted some out here. <laughs> sprouted a new one somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I really don't know what, why these ones are so happy compared to the other ones. Maybe it's just the simple fact that there's the fabric around them, so, like, the weeds are kept off them. Yeah. That's well, an interesting sage, though. It's sage that tastes like, that has a pineapple-y flavor to it. Yeah, especially these little flowers. The nectar in them really tastes like pineapple. Oh, really? Yeah. Let me try one. Oh man, that is very fragrant and aromatic. Ryan likes to try different things. Yeah, yeah, I'm a fan of, of trying the uh, varieties that mm -hmm. exist. Especially ones that are like heritage. Like pineapple sage, for instance, is actually a heritage sage. Oh, is it? It's the only edible red sage, I believe. Yeah, this is where your food comes from, pups. He's like, I know, I'm sniffing for more of those sweet potatoes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what did you find now? <laughs> the radish greens that I left behind. <laughs> oh, you're eating the radish greens? Yeah, I Isn't... pulled a radish out of there and ate the radish earlier, and she found the greens. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a little bit hot for you, puppy dog? <laughs> oh, it's so funny to me that she's sitting in the plants and not eating any hay. Uh, 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 you okay. don't do that. Well, she wasn't eating the plants. <laughs> it's funny to me that the first thing that she chose was the thing that was laying on the ground, not in the ground. <laughs> yes, you little stinker. <laughs> A vegetarian canine. Do you want to try one of those? Oh, man. That is just so weird. Because those things are not, I mean, they're spicy. They're <laughs> yeah. spicy hot. <laughs> Good experiments in this garden this year. And some decent produce out of it too, which is awesome. So we've learned things, haven't we? Yeah. So this is the pile of smaller logs that I have. Some of these are only, probably only about good for practicing with. Some of them will produce some beautiful wood for us, though. I have to say I'm rather looking forward to having the mill running, being able to uh, get started on this pile here and start bringing in some bigger logs once I can prove to myself that I can actually mill this stuff. Should be fun. Mm -hmm.